Last night, something dramatic happened. I had gotten myself ready for a word. Uh, what I did yesterday was what God gave to me the very first day I received the invitation to speak at this conference. And so I diligently took notes and I spent some time to pray about it. One thing I always make sure is that I do not speak out of what I have known. I speak as I am led. And so yesterday was sweet. For me, I felt accomplished that I've done what God wanted me to do. Uh, coming into Abuja, there was a word that the Lord dropped in my spirit, man, and I thought that word was going to be for Garden Light Assembly until last night after I was dropped off. As soon as I got into the room, the Lord said to me, there is nothing that you have that is good for my people tomorrow. So we started a new journey till about 2 a.m. and I was in the presence of the Lord. And the first thing I want to say to you today is congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. The Lord said to me to tell you your warfare is accomplished. And it's always good when people have stayed in God's presence and they have waited on the Lord and the Lord sees that their warfare is accomplished and that gives me rest. And so the Lord said to me to tell you it's time to profit. It's time to profit. So it's a very simple message. As a matter of fact, I'm just an, I'm an errand man. I'm only here just to tell you what the Lord has said. You would decide what to do with it. But I prayed for you that the Lord will help you Amen. to make a profitable choice. Amen. The Lord says to tell you it's time for profit. Amen. Help me tell three people around you that it's time for profit. One thing you have to know about our God whom we serve is that God is a businessman. Each time I look through the pages of the scriptures, I see God a very, very shrewd businessman. God never applied himself into anything that does not give him profit. God has so much, but he's not a waster. That's why Jesus Christ will lift up barley loaves of bread, five and two fishes, give thanks, put it into the hands of his apostles, and they would begin to distribute the bread, and the bread was increasing in their hands, increasing in their hands, and they were able to feed, the Bible says, 5,000 men besides women and children, which means that they would have spent so much, to, you know, they would have at least fed up to 15,000 to 16,000 people, and haven't fed everybody Jesus said, take up the fragment. Because God is not a waster. He said, gather the fragment that none be lost. And they gathered them and measured them. It was 12 baskets full. And there were 12 men with him. So you know where the 12 baskets went. Shout hallelujah. God is not a waster. God is a businessman. And so you too should serve God with a mindset of a business person. Be very, very, very shrewd in doing business with God. Everything God has given to you is for you to do this business with while you are on the face of the earth. Jesus Christ asked his parents, don't you know that I have to go about my father's business? So I always pity folks that spend precious time to raise unnecessary, you know, troubles on social media about churches becoming business houses. One big lawyer said, Adeboye is not opening churches, he's opening business centers. So I asked him, I said, what do you think we're here to do? We're here to do business for our God. Am I talking to you? 
not business in the in the greedy sense, but business with purpose. Someone shout hallelujah. So for every business you have transacted well, it's time to profit. Let me show you the word God shared with me in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17. He said, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Who teaches you to profit? Who leads you by the way you should go? I am the Lord your God. Who teaches you to profit? God does not teach you to make losses. He teaches you to be profitable. Look into the, your right hand. Just lift your right hand and look into your palm. Speak a word into it. I say, from this day, you will handle profit, not losses. In the name of Jesus. Your hand is blessed. Because we must be careful to know that we are made for profit, not for losses. Even if you are a civil servant, even if you are a vulcanizer, even if you are just, you know, an errand man at the airport, a porter, rejoice that you are a child of God. You are for profit. God is going to make everything he has bestowed upon you to yield profit. So because I'm the one who teach your hand, teach you to profit, and who leads you in the way you should go. Why is God so interested? And who is the person that is going to profit today? Three things God mentioned. He said, I have found men and women that are diligent towards me. I have found men and women that are faithful towards me. I have found men and women that are committed to my cause. God is here to reward faithfulness, commitment, and diligence. So to every single one of you, that are found within this block. To you, I say congratulations. Your warfare is accomplished. God said that much to me. Look at what he said in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Say, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name. In that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Anytime you minister to the saints and you have continued to minister, God marks you very closely. Usually, the way our God deals with us is that once a responsibility falls on your shoulder and you have proven your mettle, more work will be given to you. Now, that more work that is given to you is to prove your strength of flexibility and elasticity. It will pull you up and it's the process of building capacity. Once you show to the Lord that you can still take in that one more will be given to you. Now, by the time it is profit time, God is going to bring such volumes upon your life that those who saw you laboring under the first, under the second, and under the third will be surprised to find you at such a height. 
because they were just walking, watching from the flank. That's the way God operates. And I see God do that with somebody in this house. A triple leap is coming upon you. See, God is not unjust to take his eyes away from your work and your labor of love. Every labor of love, please follow me very closely. There is a work of love. There is a labor of love. When you work, people work to earn salary. But no man can pay you for your labor. Only God can pay you for your labor. There are people who have labored in the field of love. When you begin to love the unlovable, you are laboring. When you love people, not because of who they are, but because of who you know that they are in God. Some of us are not lovable. We're not at all. When you get close to us, you will see humanity displayed. And humanity will always smell in the nose of that, that person that is carnal. Carnality does not have grace to condone humanity. Are you listening to me? Yes. So when you draw close to some of us, you find more than 1,000 reasons why you cannot love us. Because love takes a lot out of you. Love is sacrificial. Love does not answer to promises. Love answers to giving. When you say you love, something will leave you. And it takes a lot of energy takes a lot of patience. Takes a lot of painstaking to love somebody. When you say, I love you, you are saying to the person, even the smelling things around you, I can cope with it. I will stick to them. Is somebody listening to me? Now, so when you have labored in love, a man on whose behalf or for whose sake you labored in that love cannot, I mean, cannot reward you. No man has what it takes to reward another person for laboring in love. Only God can reward you for your labor of love. And I bring to you prophetically as I am sent that your labor of love is to be rewarded now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For bearing with them. For coping with those things. You had more than a thousand reasons why you should not. And even if you decided not to stay on, nobody is going to give you a conk on the head. You're free to move on. But you stayed just because of Jesus Christ. What you have done has struck the chord. You have won a jackpot in heavenly places. Not that American lottery that does not give you any hope of certainty. But this is from Jehovah himself. That's what I'm asked to say. While I was still taking notes on this, there was a wave that just passed across me and the Lord showed to me a fresh flow. It like a stream gushing out. A fresh flow coming out. And I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, I will pour my spirit upon them and I will flood them with my goodness. 
Now, when I heard that word, I got up momentarily to pray. Because I know what it means. I know what it means. Now, it is a flood of blessings. It's not a flood or a torrent of death. It's not a flood or a torrent of, uh, of hardship or suffering. This is a flood of blessing. It is going to overflow your bank. It's going to surprise you. And he said to me, it is a season of the opening of new channels. A season of openings of new channels so that God's people can connect to fresh opportunities. That's what he said to me. I'm very careful and I took note of every single word. He said, it's, it is, it is an, a season for the opening of new channels so that God's people can connect to fresh opportunities. Now, that you may have suffered disappointment, but never lose that yet because you are in for a big deal. You heard me say better amen now. Now, Jesus Christ would want to teach us a very quick lesson on how to recognize the fact that God is a serious businessman. Now, in John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit. And they are life. What is he saying to us? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profit nothing. Which means that the spirit is a spirit of profit. Are we still in the house today? The Holy Spirit is a spirit of profit. The Holy Spirit cannot flood your life and leave you in the place of losses. You can't be a loser being filled with the Holy Ghost. Never will God pour his blessed spirit upon you. Last night I told us that we have been called with the holy calling. A holy calling is a calling that is set apart that no man can explain. And God said, I have called you with the holy calling. And here again, he's saying that it is the spirit that gives life. Our flesh does not profit anything. So please, don't judge that business in your carnal mind. Don't judge it by your fleshly indulgences, but judge it according to the power of the spirit of God. See it in the realm of the spirit that it is God that is saying to you that you are due for a blessing. Amen. Not asking again, can it be haven't passed through all this? Will it ever come to pass? Is this not part of what these people used to say to us? Let that not be your thought. Take it that you are due for something good. And you will be very thankful for it. Say a better amen now. Now, see how Paul the Apostle captured it. When Paul was interpreting this word in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, he said that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one to do what? To do what? To profit with all. To make profit of all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one. For the profit of all. God is a very shrewd businessman. 
He did not give you the Holy Spirit for you to record losses. Whatever you lay your hands upon to do, in all integrity, will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are happy doing it, God will be happy adding to it. While the Lord shared this with me, I remembered a testimony shared by one great man of God that has gone to be with the Lord, Derek Prince. I have this very strong affinity with that man of God and his works. I just have one regret that I never met him one-on-one. -on -one. But God has his way of doing things. Derek Prince was speaking to a group of Chinese young men and women. And he was giving them a testimony about a certain man in Germany who was in prison for 18 years. He got into prison at the age of 22. He was discharged from prison and he was 40. Now, he had no skills. And by reason of his past history with drugs and all that, he was not employable. He was not employable. So, after he had been through his rehabilitation and he was brought back, he started looking for a job. At the time, he didn't even know how to drive. And he was not allowed to drive because he was just, you know, he can't even go to any driving school to learn because he was unfit. Everything around him simply said to him, man, you are not. But while he was in prison, he had given his life to Christ. And for a period of well over 10 years, he has learned faithfulness. So, the only credential he had was faithfulness. The only credential he had was faithfulness. He had no classmates. But he had a hope. So, a certain man said, well, I don't have any job for you here. I'm only listening to you because of the man that recommended you to me. He's, he's a friend that I respect so much. All I want you to do is just help them around at the close of day or while work is going on in the factory. Take up the scraps, scrap papers and all that, whatever. Just clean the place, put it into the bin and send it out. Be doing that and we'll be paying you. So he was doing that faithfully faithfully but the man was watching very closely and saw that this guy is a very faithful guy very faithful guy so he gave him another responsibility this time around was to do the work of a clerk moving documents and moving things and taking record of some incoming documents and outgoing documents and all that and he was accurate on his job. So he lifted him up to the point where he became a supervisor. And the man now said, that job you're giving to me, I do not have the academic qualification to face it. Let me go out and do, you know, find myself some school, learn something, acquire skill, then I return. The man said to him, no, you are the only faithful man I find around here. I won't let you go. I can't let you go. Stay here. I will arrange for you to be trained from the office so that when I retire in six years time, you will take over from me. 
So having no credentials but faithfulness, this God or prophets made that man profitable. He trained on the job. He learned how to communicate on the job. He learned how to read and write while he was still working. Teachers will come and take turns and communicate with him and teach him the basics. And he was following on. But he became a CEO. He passed through the path in 10 years. He was, by the time he was 50 years of age, he was seated on top of a multinational, multi-million dollar work as a CEO. He took over from the owner. God has seen your faithfulness. If you are the one I'm talking to, I'm saying to you congratulations over again. I'm not trying to say something to you that I will, you know, I will, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. And besides that, your papa here is a covenant brother. And I know that even if it happens that I run away, I'm in Port Harcourt, he will see me. He can chase me down to the hole where I belong in my hometown. So I'm not going to play with your interest, but I'll tell you exactly what God has said. I mean it when I say that God is ready for you to make profit. Amen. Help me tell three people sitting by you, it's time for profit. Please say it as you mean it. Say it. The spirit of God that has been poured into this house this season, this October to power, is a spirit of profit. It's a spirit of profit. I would not be surprised if by the time we are having October to power next year that we are not here again. Amen. I won't be surprised. By the strength of what the Lord has shown to me, there is going to be speed. Amen. The change will be swift. Amen. I won't be surprised. Amen. We are depending on God for great things. Amen. They are coming. Let me quickly share with you some things that can make you to be unprofitable. Because if I don't tell you and you begin to profit and you fall into those loopholes, you could lose your profit. I've worked with businessmen that made so much money and in less than six months, they are looking for 5,000 naira to buy fuel into their car. I have related with politicians that made money. And in less than a year, they are borrowing money from their in-laws and friends. It simply means that those ones did not have the word of God and they did not pay attention to the issues that God forbids that can make you unprofitable. So I'm going to share five of them with you. Number one, in Jeremiah chapter number 13 from verse 1 to 11, I'm going to explain so we don't have to go through the scriptures, but take down the note. When you get back home, spend some time to read it. Let me explain to you. God said to Jeremiah, take a girdle and tie it round about your waist. 
So he did. He took it. He said, buy a fresh one, linen, and tie it round about your waist. Does any lady have a shawl here? Where is that shawl you used to cover your body? Uh, very good. You have your own? Let me borrow it. Thank you. Watch me. This is beautiful. If I were a lady, I would have coveted it. <laughs> this was what he did. And the Lord said to him, take it around for many days. So it was on him for many days. Then one morning, the Lord said to him, take it off. And I took it off. He said, travel all the way to Euphrates. And you will find a rock there. Put it right inside the cave of the rock and close it in. And he obeyed. God never said anything to him again. After many days, God said to him, do you still remember that ghetto? He said, yes, go back and take it. And he went back and he brought it out. Jeremiah now said, this is unprofitable. This is useless. This is not the same thing that I bought, that I used myself and brought in here. God said to him, go and tell those children of Judea that I made them to be like this girdle and I tied them around my waist and I carried them everywhere. They were my choice people. I cherished them so much. But now that they have chosen to do something contrary to what I have in mind for them, I am going to bury them somewhere and they will be on, no longer profitable to me or to themselves. The only sin that Judah was committing that God frowned at was that they began to walk by the dictates of their own mind. That's all. Thank you, ma. Thank you. That they were walking by the dictates of their own mind. I pray for you that you will not walk by the dictates of your mind. Amen. As God blesses you. Twenty-three years ago, a man walked into a church where I pastored in Portacourt. It was very early in the morning we were having we called our program early due and he walked in in bathroom slippers bathroom slippers because I then I had just returned from missions in Ghana and I was singing a Ghanaian song much later after the service said to me that he was passing and he was hearing me sing that Ghanaian song and he said I will go there and listen to this song if that man is the Ghanaian or not. That was what drew him into the church. But after I had given the word of the day, very short word of not up to 10 minutes, and I laid hands on them, he came back and said to me, I want to give my life to Jesus. So I led him to Christ. This man had been out of job. He was watching, working for Slumberger and someone who never liked him had used his position to place him on standby for one year and eight months without salary. So the man had gone down to his last dime and out. He was just prancing the entire environment in bathroom sleepers. I have seen God 
by his word make lost axe heads to float again. Yours will come back to life. I'm telling you. So I prayed with him. Simple prayer. He said, Amen. And he walked away. Seven days after, there are main boss in the US flew into town. And he said, Where is that man? Mentioned his name. I haven't received any mail from him all this while. Where is he? Then somebody now whispered to him. He's been placed on standby in the last one year and eight months. He said, for what? Who authorized it? Who in this place authorized it? I am the group head. Nothing happens and I do not know. We are online. Everything that happens in this company as it has to do with manpower in this track has to come through me. Who authorized it? So they pointed at the man. Said, you did that? Okay. Now, you are going to go with me back to the US. Go and look for that man now. I'm waiting. So he sat on his chair. So I'm waiting until he returns. So they came into TMC estate. I was looking for the man who they went and found him in one corner. They said, the boss is around. He is looking for you. So what am I going to say? Come with us. They took him there. Looking unkempt. And the boss said, now that you are alive, you are not dead. You will be restored. Take your chair. Sit down here. He personally had to sign those one year and eight months salary. Say so pay it to him. Plus the promotions that he missed. Give it to him. Right there. As if that was the only thing he came to do in Nigeria. When he was done with that, he said to the other guy, I'm seen in the US in the next six days. If you're not there, you're fired. When he now took him over to the US, he now made this guy to oversee him from Nigeria. But after God did all of that, this man began to walk by the dictate of his mind. He went back into alcoholism. He would drink. He would do the girls. He would do all of that and all that, all that. I called him and said, my brother, see your belly don't big. No, because your head will be gone. When head big, they, they go down. When belly big, he, they go down. Tinko. <laughs> that was countryman advice. <laughs> so I gave him countryman advice. He laughed and walked away. He said, ah, pastor. Now, we, we did, we did, we did, we did, we did. I said, I understand that thing. He left. Not too long from then, they tra transferred him. First, he was taken to the UK. They moved him out of UK. They moved him to Scotland. From, from, from London, they took him to Scotland. From Scotland, they moved him out to one other location where they have one serious job and all that. When he got there, what he did out of his own thinking cost him something. And he lost his job. He lost his job. He returned back to Portacourt because his native doctor was still in Portacourt. Abby? But by the time he got back, the Lord said to me, I have nothing for him. So I said to him, my brother, I'm sorry. The Lord has said nothing concerning you. Let's wait. This time around, he became more diligent. 
I know what that means. Prancing around. He was willing to do anything, but there was nothing for him to do. Yes. And he was there like that for a very long time. Eventually, before I knew it, he had relocated to Ghana. Few months back, I was asking a friend of his, where is the man? He said, that man, no taking. You see him. I don't understand what has come of him. I don't know what to, what to call him. Put your hand on your head. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Help me. Not to, walk not to walk by my own imagination. Teach me how to depend on you in the name of Jesus. Say better, amen. amen. Let me tell you how God sees it. You know, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, from verse 18 to 19, you see this man. That Jesus Christ was talking about in a parable where he had given him talent, one talent. He took the talent and he hid it in the ground. He hid it in the ground. Now, the reason why he hid it in the ground is that so that he would not lose it. So that when his wicked boss comes back, he will give it to him the way. But unknown to him, talents are not to be buried. Talents are for profit. So he said to his boss, I know you're a wicked man. You're an austere guy. You read from where you do not sow. So I kept this thing. I don't want you to have my head for it. Now that you are back, take your thing. So the man said, you are a foolish man. You are a more wicked person. At least you have given it to the bank. Let them keep it for me and give me a little change. That's to tell you that God is for profiting. I should have, but now that I'm here, I should have received some interest. But you wasted my, my talent. You wasted everything. So take it from him. Give it to that guy that is standing. Say, for him who had nothing, nothing shall be added to him. Even the one that he had will be taken away from him and be given to the one that had much. God has given you talents. He has given you grace. He has given you skills. He has given you time. He has given you treasures. Use it to profit. Have you noticed that fruit trees don't eat their fruit? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? How many of us we have fruit trees in our compound in the village? Let me see your hand. Have you ever seen where the fruit tree is eating the fruit from it? The fruit tree produces the fruit. Others eat the fruit. Have you seen where wells drink their own water? Wells don't drink their own water. God has made you a tree of righteousness. And he said that out of you shall flow rivers of living water. You are a well. You are a living tree. And whatever that happens to a tree will happen to you. There are two things that often happen to trees. Is either that people are stoning the tree in order to get fruit. Any tree that people are not stoning does not have fruit. So if you're bearing fruit, you expect stones. You are a tree of righteousness now. Am I saying something that is strange for Christ's sake? You are a tree of righteousness. If you are yielding fruit, expect stones. If you are doing well in your office, you will find contenders that will fight you. That will stone you for nothing. Expect it. You should expect it. It is a sign that you are producing something. People don't stone barren trees. Barren trees are just meant to be cursed. But fruitful trees are stoned. Any well that is producing water will receive too many buckets inside. People will drink from you. Because something is coming out of you. 
If there's nothing coming out, they'll avoid you. You're just an ordinary mod. One day they just expect you to collapse and finish. Somebody will come and build us on top of you. But producing water? No. You are the guy to go to. You are the lady to befriend. They will come to you for diverse reasons. And they want to get something from you. But be ready for that. The Lord will not let you to be empty. Amen. You will always be sufficient. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hand like this. Say, Father, Father. fill me up fill for your purposes. Shout a better amen. amen. It's time to profit, Jelly. This is your time to profit. This is your time to profit. This is your time to profit. Every time, every talent, every treasure God has given is to enable you to be of service, to become profitable. I was looking at that scripture in Acts chapter 13 verse number 36 where the Holy Spirit was, was summarizing the work of David on the face of the earth. said, David, after that he had served his generation by the will of God. He rested. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. I was buried with his fathers. Even the betrayal of uh, Ahitophel was part of his service to his generation. Even when that fellow was stoning him and spitting on his head, he was still serving his generation. Everything that happened to David put together, he was serving his generation by the will of God. Everything David had, he was using it to serve his generation. Was David profitable? Was he profitable? That's why we still remember him today. God had to endow him with the sure mercies from his own throne. See, as long as the sun shines, no man, no, there will never come a day when there will be nobody that will be sitting on your throne. He gave him his everlasting mercies, everlasting covenant. Praise the Lord somebody. Number two, number two, number two, let's quickly take a look at Isaiah chapter 44 verse 9 and 10. Isaiah chapter 44 verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 44 verses 9 and 10 says, Those who make an image, all of them are useless people. They are unprofitable. That's what he said in, New King, in, the, in the King James trans, translation. He said they are not profitable. All their precious things shall be of no profit. They are their own witnesses. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Verse 10. Who would form a God or a molten image that profit him nothing? Normal people. People who are wise, that are smart, don't use, waste their time to spend money on things that will not bring profit to them. Number two thing I want to advise you on, please make sure that the channels of blessing that are coming your way they will come with a lot of precious things. Say precious things. Say precious things. A lot of precious things will come to you. But please be sure. Don't make an idol of them. Do not make an idol of them. Do not make an idol of them. Do not make an idol of them. While I was taking down this point. I saw the image of a woman. A woman that had been in an office for many years. She had labored for that company. She had worked for that organization. And people know that she has worked. But many a times, all she has gotten had been this troubles here and there instead of congratulations or cheers they said to her you are never do well because she has this you know boss that was always afraid of her because he knows that she is very skillful 
I saw that past. Said, the time of our reward is now. Amen. So I prayed that God will honor that woman. Amen. That reward will not be taken away from her. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. But please don't make an idol of it. Don't make an idol of it. It's possible for you to make an idol out of something that God has given you. Imagine that the man Gideon was so blessed. The people say, come and reign over us. He said, I don't want to be a king because he was smart to know that God has not bring kingship to his territory, that the kingship is still in the house of Judah. But he wasn't smart again when he said to them, give me an effort. Let me just do something here. And the moment he created it, it became an idol. That idol attracted evil that all his children were killed, save for one. I pray for you again. You will not make an idol of what God will give to you. There are precious things coming into this assembly. I see greatness. I see greatness. I see people of substance. Yes, imagine out of this assembly. I see people I see people who, who are recognized in society. Yes, imagine out of this assembly. You have cried. Your altar has been soothed with lots of tears. You have labored. You have sweated. But listen, the cup is full. Yes, David said, you anointed my head with oil and my cup overflowed. The anointing that came upon David's head made him to run, 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 fight, 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 but his cup overflowed so much that David was such a blessed man. Such a blessed man. Whatever you have suffered for, whatever you labored for, is returning back to you in a prophet. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, next, number three, avoid boasting. Avoid boasting about what you have received from God. Avoid boasting. Paul the apostle said, it is unprofitable to boast of what I have received of the Lord. That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. It says, it is unprofitable. Don't boast of what God has done. While I was receiving that word, I saw a woman that had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. She has been in tears. She had been in torment. As a matter of fact, there are two in-laws that she has that each time they come around her, they do nothing but mock her. But she had been such a very resourceful woman and of great support to her husband and even the husband's extended family. But she had been in that kind of shame for some time. I heard the word of the Lord say to me, this is the time. This is the time. So if you're here, congratulations. This is your time. Mark this date. Mark this date. Mark this date. Don't forget it. It's your time. You will not you will not give that glory to a native doctor. You will not give that glory to any other source. Every other thing you have tried that failed. Now, Jesus is interested in your case. Somebody shout hallelujah. But please, don't make that baby an idol. Don't make that child an idol. Am I communicating today? If God gives you a good relationship, don't make that relationship an idol. If God has given you good business breakthrough, don't make it an idol. If God has given you ministerial increase, don't make it an idol. Whatever God has given to you is your profit, but don't make it an idol. I've seen people make idol out of things that God has given. No wonder David prayed, don't give me so much that will make me to stay away from your presence. And don't let me to suffer hunger that I will cause you. 
That's it. That's a very powerful reasoning. He said, don't give me so much that I will no longer recognize you. And don't please allow me to be hungry for me to be tempted to curse you. David, no wonder God called him a man after my heart. Praise the Lord. Now, God can bless you with so much blessing that if you do not have the capacity to carry that blessing, to know that I should not make an idol out of this, you will suffer loss. That was what happened to Solomon. God blessed Solomon with wisdom. Blessed him with resources. Blessed him with relationships. Blessed him with people. Blessed him so much that all Solomon pride himself to do was to have plenty babes. 999. How did he do it? I can't imagine it. I have only one and I've not been able to satisfy her. And the man had 999. <laughs> Everywhere was babes. And he was still looking for the last wife that came to warm the father's body. He still needed that. Eh? He was still wanting you to complete the 1,000. Captain of the ship. Praise the Lord somebody. But in the end, the same women he brought in made him to stay away from his God. He made idol of the blessing that God gave to him. And God said, I'm going to deal with this guy. And you know, God is always very conscious of his word. He said, I will not do it in his time because I've already promised his father. But now I will do it to his son. I will take the kingdom and tear it apart. For the sake of his father, I will leave two. But the ten will go the other way. He knew that those boys that will call themselves Israel won't do better. But God was so upset that he said, Solomon and his generations are not qualified anymore to keep this throne. Please, don't do something that will cause trouble for your children. God is coming with a lot for you. Amen. Don't make an idol of it. Amen. Am I communicating today? Yes, I'm, I'm not preaching. I'm only talking to us because I'm delivering a message. If I came here to preach, I would have been running around and enjoying myself. Is that okay? But I'm only here to give you just a message. Praise the Lord somebody. Then, the fourth point. The fourth point. Avoid getting engaged in any purposelessness. Purposelessness. Especially when engaged in discussions. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23 says, In all labor there is profit. In all. In how many? All, in all labor, in all labor, there is profit. If you have labored in faithfulness, you have labored in love, you have labored, you know, in diligence, you have labored in any area, there is profit for it. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. Idle chatter. What's an idle chatter? When your conversation is in purposelessness. When you keep relationships that are not of purpose, every relationship you keep must be purpose built. Why are you in that office? Why will you visit that place tomorrow? You want to see a friend? Why do you wish to see that friend? Is it for such a purposeless charter? Avoid it. Idle chatter leads to poverty. Some of us have discussed things that ordinarily shouldn't be said and we give away our safety. We give away our safety. Some of us have discussed things and we give away our blessings. 
I remember a certain young lady that got engaged to a fantastic guy. Very fantastic guy. Very homely boy. Very humble. Down to earth and all that. And each time she'll be going there, she'll say, my guy is a very good guy. He's a very humble. He promised me this. He promised me that. And then she'll be doing her hand like this. She'll be doing her hand like this. And the girls will be, oh yeah, yours is good. Oh, ah, we pray that something will happen. Like that. <sighs> she never knew that not all those who are living in Jerusalem are Israelites. <laughs> and then somebody just went back there. Whatever she told the guy, only God knows. But they obviously were not good things about that lady. You know that lady you want to mind? Ah, she's my friend. We've been together. There was a time like that. We were just runs girls. We helped ourselves with something. You know how things are now. We just survived. But well, you're a good guy. You know, that's what I'm telling you this. You see, she's, she'll help you. Finish you. Tori don't get kill leg. That was how that lady lost. She was almost going mad. She was almost going mad. But it was what came out of her mouth. Idol chatter. If, God, if you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and now you are pregnant, why should you go to say, oh, me? Ah, the talks are not going to get better now. Me, I don't get to. I don't carry her. I go burn her. Are you trying to prove a point? What are you trying to prove? Eh? Pregnancy does not recede. It progresses. Allow them to see it. Don't tell them. Allow them to see it. Do you know why God allows pregnancy to form up to four months, getting into the fifth month before it starts showing up? Because there is a time for incubation. For the seed to sit down and take position. Not for you to go and, hey, me, ah, they'll be all over. They will come and see. Then you carry and catch it in the morning. Come and join me, shout hallelujah. And then you dance all around the place. You are making a mockery of God's blessing. Forget about all that idol chatter. Keep it. Do you know why the mother of Jesus Christ decided to keep all that the Lord was revealing? inside one small side of her heart? Do you know why? She had to keep it quietly for herself so that at the fullness of time she will function in his life in the way she ought to. Amen. Jesus Christ himself said, woman, my time has not come. The woman said, ah, your time never come. Okay. Please, whatever he says to you, do it. Because the time was within her limit. She opened him up. And that was the beginning of the miraculous in Christ. The mother, because she was hiding things ready for the time. Certain things should be kept. God is bringing treasures to you. Amen. And he is trusting you that you will keep it. Amen. Don't make idol of it. And don't be a jester. Don't get into idle chatters. Don't go into purposelessness. Don't drift into that path that does not lead to anything good. One more point, number five. Be sure you stay under the authority of your pastor. This part, I almost like was striking it last night, but I left it. And the Lord said to me, Go back to it and say it. Be sure you stay under the authority of your pastor. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Obey those who rule over you. And be submissive. For they watch out for your souls. As those who must give account. A pastor is an accountant for your souls to God. He says, let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. Once your act 
activities, your actions or inactions bring so much grief to your pastor and your pastors, you are already walking the path of unprofitability. I am sure today I have given you many instances where I have worked with people who were profitable and they turned out to be unprofitable. Including that my Ghanaian friend. He became unprofitable. Why? Because he was unable to keep the words of his pastor. Let me just share this to you. Demons will not obey you if you disobey your pastor. I told us that much yesterday that if you walk under authority, you have power. That's why that centurion said, I am a man under authority. Jesus immediately knew that this man is a man who knows where he's going. And he honored him. Even though he was not of the commonwealth of Israel, he extended miracle to him. That's it. The Pharisees asked the disciples of Jesus, call the man. When he appeared, he said, whose authority, under whose authority do you do these things? If you stay under authority, nothing will hurt you. The word of your pastor, a word from your pastor will keep you. Imagine that Anna was in the temple of God and she was praying fervently to God. Eli was somewhere sitting down and was watching her out. The only thing Eli could say to her was to accuse her of drunkenness. If it were today, that would have been the last day she would have gone to that church. Nonsense, pastor. Say me, I drink kakai. You go see me again. Eh? When I pay my tithe, you don't see kakai from my mouth. Now I come to pray, now you can't see kakai from my mouth. Come see me next Sunday now. Yeah, they will run away. That's the kind of thing. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. But she said to him, no, my Lord. I'm just a woman with a sorrowful heart. And from the depth of my heart, I'm pouring it all out to God. Then Eli turned around and said, the Lord has answered your prayer. Amen. That was the end of her travel. That was the end of her travel. She did not despise her pastor or get angry at him because he used the foul word on her. She rather stated her case. Don't ever try. Don't let the devil tempt you to the point where you start having a different mind towards your pastor and your pastors. Try and walk with them with understanding. There is a blessing for it. Amen. When God called me to start this present work, you were aware, sir, I was treated shabbily. I was listen, even he had a revelation he said, my brother, what is happening to you? I see you so down in my dreams and I'm no longer comfortable. What is happening to you? And I said to him, God will help me because of the way I was treated. I didn't jump out from the window. When the Lord called me, I went and I confided in him. I told him, sir, this is what had occurred to me in the last six years. I have been in the middle of this whole thing. It was him that also even interpreted it for me that you have to be on the mission ground to the work of missions. Now I said to him, let me start the missions work. That was the problem. I was treated so badly, but I received a warning. Never you see any contrary word to him. Not before him, not behind him. And I did everything possible to stay away from it. 
after five years. This, my pastor, had never visited where I lived, even while I walked with him for 13 years. He never knew where I lived. But five years after I, we started Like Minds Christian Church, one Sunday evening, he appeared in my house. He said, for one year, the Lord has warned me that if I do not come to you, something strange will happen to me. He said, I came to tell you I'm sorry that I did not handle your exit with wisdom. And I also come to say to you, let's sheet the swords. Forgive me for whatever I've done. And let's start afresh again. So I knelt down. I called my wife, come and join me. Sir, please pray for us. It was a short prayer. He said, all that God has placed upon you to achieve in life begins today. Amen. And he walked out of my house. And thank God that God has just given me a seed. I traveled to Biasa State. Somebody gave me a love offering. I had not even touched the envelope to know what was the content. The Lord said, run upstairs, take it, and put it at his feet. He wanted to reject it. I said, you taught me to copy. Don't kill me. He said, okay, give it to my PA. Well, listen. After that brief encounter of not up to 30 minutes, there was a shift in my life. Listen. Even though Noah became drunk to stupor, the spirit of God was still alive in him. Don't be tempted to disobey your pastor. Your biological parents downloaded you from heaven to this planet earth. Your pastors have responsibility to upload you back to heaven. If you disobey them, you will linger for nothing. If you can take care of these five points I've raised with you, then this positive holocaust <laughs> that is coming is for you. Amen. Bow your head. I want you to speak to the Lord. Speak to him. Tell him, Lord, I am ready for you. Locate me. Let it be according to your word. Let it be according to your word. Yes, Lord. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be, oh Lord. Let it be according to your word. Let it be, Lord, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Let it be, oh Lord. Let it be according to your word. Let it be just tell him Lord let it be according to your word you have labored you have not labored in vain you have given you have not given in vain you have supported you have not supported in vain everything that God gave you that you laid down in this tabernacle every single thing that you pushed forward to make this assembly what it is today. Whatever you have done, is it from the point of protocol or swing? Is it from the point of catering? Is it the point for welfare? Is it from the point of evil cleaning? Every work you have done in this place has attracted heaven. There is a record with an income that is written. There's somebody here. Some time ago, somebody made a jest of you. So you are giving to church what God blessed you with. 
you are a foolish person. But now God is going to disprove them that you are not a foolish person. Because what you have given as a kingdom investment is now ripe for an harvest. Your life will tell the story. God will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Father, I thank you for this whole assembly. I give you praise for that woman you showed to me who had been about with the issue of seeking your face for the fruit of the womb. Lord, let your word be even as you have spoken. You know her visitor. Lord, by this time next year, let it be that we are celebrating the birth of a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, oh God, for that woman that had labored in that office all of these years with all of her might, all the time, but she had been hoodwinked, she had been messed up, but you are set to promote her. Let that promotion come. Let that promotion come in such a way that will make her to dance in your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I see you honor men and women. I see you bless people. Let your blessing come. Let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. I bless this assembly. I bless the pastorate. I bless the leadership. I bless every man, woman, boy, girl that have been partakers of the work in this house. I bless the workforce. I bless all that have tended others and have labored in love. I bless you with every blessing in Christ Jesus. And the blessing the Lord has placed upon you, no man can curse. The blessing as, that God has placed upon you, no man shall take away. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And one believer shout a Pentecostal Amen.